We are going to discuss about Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, who was born on Christmas Eve, 1953, at a place called Sheikuru. Sheikuru is in north of Mwingi sub-county. It is next to Tana River on one side and on the other side it is in Embu where we have people like Reverend Mutama Musimi. Reverend Mutama Musimi is a Mukamba but is in Embu. He is on the other side of the river while Kalonzo Musioka is on the other side of the river. At the time that I used to re regularly visit uh, Mwingi, the way somebody from Sheikuru would go to Mutava Musimi's place in uh, Embu, you had to come all the way to Mwingi, and then you go all the way to Thika, take Thika Superhighway and go to Embu. I'm made to understand that currently there is I'm made to understand that currently there is a, a bridge crossing there. Actually, if that bridge is there, it will make the distance from Mombasa to Ethiopia by B half. Now, the man name is Kalonzo. Kalonzo, I do not know the meaning of the word Kalonzo, but like any other Bantu languages, we have one name that is split in the sizes of a person. Like Kalonzo and Kilonzo is the same name, but Kalonzo is considered to be a small one. When he was born, he was small in body. If he would have been big in body, he would have been called Kilonzo. Just like Philip Kilonzo, former police boss, and Mutula Kilonzo, a former lawyer and even the current uh, governor for Makweni. His name is Kalonzo, a small Kilonzo. Then there is Musioka, his father's name Musioka. Musioka, just as I said in many Bantu languages, we have variations in one name to indicate that the person was either small or big. Now, if somebody was born, small he would be called Kasioka and if he was when he was being born he was huge he would be called Musioka so it shows that his father was born not or uh, not thin Musioka and Musioka means Ritani Ritani it means that uh, there is a lady who used to give birth to kids and whenever she used to give birth to kids they would die. So, uh, the fourth or even fifth kid, the subsequent kid, would be named Musioka or Kasioka. If it's huge, it's Musioka. If, if it's small, it's Kasioka. In Kikuyu, we have Murioki. Murioki is a person who was born under the same circumstances. But just like in Kikamba, they say, Sioka, Sioka Kurudi, in Kiku is Morioki or Karioki. Karioki means the one who resurrected. The one who resurrected. So if he was small, it's Karioki. And if it is large, is Morioki. And in Luya, such a person is called Makoha. Makoha means somebody. When the woman gives birth to many kids and they die due to child mortality, she reaches a time and applies. Uh, she applies ash. She, she paints her, her body with ash, which is called a makoha. So that is why the name makoha is there. He was born, uh, Stephen Kalonso Musioka was born in Shekuru, uh, as I said, uh, on Christmas Eve, 1953. And then he went to Sheikuru Primary School between the years of 1960 and 67. 
you will notice that in those years he attended eight classes in kenya we have had four different education systems he was on the last lot of the first group the first group people used to attend primary up to standard eight and initially the standard eight certificate used to be called CAPE, kenya african preliminary examination but when kenya attained independence and since that examination was being undertaken by more than just africans it was a was removed and it became pkpe kenya preliminary examination so he sat for his kenya preliminary examination in 1967 and that is the last lot of people who sat for kpe for those who are there today you will understand that we have some people who are undertaking the last kcpe and then we have another group that is starting with Capsea. So him, he was the last KPE. And those who did the exams in 1969, 68, 69, somewhere there, are the ones who started CPE. Yes, you heard me saying CPE. CPE because we reached standard 7. I know many of you would say, Mzea, Mzea, Ukweka, K. It is CPE because we reached standard seven and that one is the one which was called 763 763 that is up to standard seven up to form six and the university three years 763 but then 763 was replaced by 844 so for the government to differentiate between somebody who did his primary in standard seven, like me, he would be called CPE. And people like you who did standard eight would be called KCP. So K, Kenya, indicates that you did standard eight and I did standard seven. From there, he went to Kitui High School. He went to Kitui High School for his form one to form four. He went to Kitui High School uh, 1968 up to 1971 for his form one to form four then when he went to uh, 19, uh to he went to kitui high school for his form one to form four completing in 1971 1971 is when he did his form four 1972 and 73 he went to meru high school for his advanced level which means form five and form six that is he completed in 1973 then in 1977 you may see that he did, you may think that he completed university for four years no but our time it was three years but somehow in 1977 he graduated as a lawyer in nairobi university and he practiced law when he was practicing law, uh, he contested for the then Kitui North seat in 1983. When he contested for the then Kitui North constituency in 1983, he lost to somebody called Philip Manundu. Manandu. Manundu or Manandu. When he lost to Philip Manandu, you know, in campaign, he used to say, I would develop Kitui North this way, I would develop Kitui North that way, I would develop Kitui North this way. Better than Manandu. But then, when, ele when elections happened, he lost to Manandu. He, among others, lost to Manandu. He went back to his law firm. Then one day, Manandu was shot dead by an AP. They had a small argument, an argument that was not even supposed to degenerate into anything. But then the AP went to the camp, took out a rifle and shot the MP dead. He shot the MP dead. Uh, when the MP was shot dead, 
there was a by-election. And when the by-election came, the by-election came in 1985, two years later. Now, when the by-election came, all those members of, all those candidates who wanted to contest that seat, remember, they had contested saying that they could be better than Philip Manando. But in the by-election, they started showing that everybody, including uh, Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, was saying that if I'm elected, I'd be a better. Uh, I know I'll, d during the 1983 elections, they would, they would say that I'm, I would be the better person. But when Manandu was shot by an AP and died, in the by-election, everybody was saying, every project that Manandu was doing, I will fulfill them. Actually, I'm the only one who can uh, continue with uh, his uh, projects. During those days, there used to be only one political party, Kanu, and he was a loyal, pol he was a loyal political operative, just like Ruto. But... Uh, on several occasions, Raila has tried to light fire on him, but uh, Kalonzo Musioka is somebody who was born uh, Kibaki type, uh, Kibaki type, Mudavadi type, the soft politicians. That is his nature. So he, he never became aggressive like Ruto. You see, Ruto, Ruto initially, he was the Kalonzo, Kibaki, whatever type of politician. But when uh, uh, Raila incited him for the better of a for a lack of a better word, uh, Ruto is more of a Raila than a Kibaki. But Kalonzo Musioka remained a Kibaki to date. Uh, during his term in the during his time in Parliament, where the constituency was renamed the Mwingi. Uh, he served diligently. Uh, he was a deputy speaker of the National Assembly. Actually, in 1988, uh, the president went round, he even went to Kitui and told the people to reappoint, to reelect him because Moi had a, a bigger dream for him. In those days, you could not become an assistant minister or even a minister if you are not an MP or even a nominated. So they elected him, they elected him uh, overwhelmingly. After getting assurance from the president that he'll be given a big post. But when the president named cabinet ministers and assistant ministers, he was not among them. What people later came to know is that he had been he had been talent spotted for the position of deputy speaker. So he became the deputy speaker. He served several ministries as an assistant minister and even several ministries as a cabinet minister. He was close to Moi because he was a political son of Mulu Mutisia. That is why he was close to Moi. It is uh, Moi, if, if you, Moi had the people like uh, Mulu Mutisia, Karyoki Chotara, and so on. So if those people would tell the president that I want in my area this and this young man to be, it would be so. So he continued that way until Multiparty came. Even when Multiparty came, he was still loyal to Kanu until uh, Raila folded, until Raila folded. Uh, his NDP and joined Kanu. And when Raila uh, wasn't pleased with Kanu and he left with his, with his group to start LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, among the people he took with him was Kalonzo Musioka. That is the first time that Kalonzo showed his ukali, I don't know, harshness. Yeah, that is the time he showed harshness and uh, they, they went and joined uh, uh, 
uh, LDP. And and if you if you can remember the the people who crossed over to join LDP, uh, he he was he was the last one. Actually, he was the minister for foreign affairs, and he was away, and people were watching him. You see, he was the gentleman. Him na uh, him and uh, Musalia Mudavadi. They, they, they go the same way. So people are watching and saying uh, he doesn't have the courage to to go, to go the way others are going. But later on, he went and went there. From that place, the, 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 there was the NAC issue. After the NAC issue, he continued uh, reigning supreme in the politics of Ukambani. He only had a problem where he was getting competition from Madame Charity Ngilu. But otherwise, he was more or less uh, the king of Ukambani. You'll even notice that uh, in the subsequent uh, coalitions, in many cases, uh, you found one was, you would find one on this side and the other on that side. And the fact that maybe, uh, let's say Kalonzo is on this side, that was enough for Madame Gilo to be on the other side. And even when they are on one side, one, one would be, one would not talk so much. So with him and Madame Gilo, usually they fight for leadership, political leadership in Ukambani. So from there he went, uh, he was also in the team that was against the 2005 uh, constitution and i have as i, I always believe that uh, those people who voted against the 2005 constitution were not against the constitution per se but it is because they just wanted to tell the president the then president mwai kibaki that uh, the people who voted for mwai kibaki in 2002 we are the ones who brought them to you Actually, I even remember a few occasions, not more than five, after the 2005, uh, what do you call it, 2005 referendum, uh, some people uh, who had gone against, uh, those, some people who had gone against uh, the constitution were even taunting the president to resign because he has lost a popular vote. So uh, there is a, a Mumeru lawyer, I keep on forgetting his name. There is a Mumeru lawyer who was very clever enough, dashed and, and registered o, ODM as a political party. ODM as a political party. So when the referendum was over, actually the person who came up with the name ODM was... Balala, Balala, the Minister for Transport, eh? no tourism, the Minister for Tourism. Balala had said that uh, immediately we we vote out this uh, uh, banana constitution, we are going to start a political party called ODM. He talked that when he was in Kakamega, Buhungu Stadium. I said, from here, we are going to start a political party called ODM. Then this Meru a lawyer went and registered ODM. The plan was, you want the party, buy it from me. Then when they went to register, they found that uh, it, Kathurima, I think it's called Kathurima, they found Kathurima had already registered the political party. So they could not register the political party. What do they do? They decided that instead of buying from him, they would start another political party called ODM, but Kenya, ODM Kenya. When they started the political party called ODM Kenya, uh, Manzo, David Manzo, was the one who registered the company, and it was in that. So the, you, you know, all the, it, it had all the big weeks in the political, and the person who was to be the ODM leader, just like what had happened to Ford, when Ford became Ford, and Ford Asili and Ford Kenya, it was also known that ODM, as 
a single party would take over would, would take over from Kibaki in 2007. So Kalonzo uh, and other, and uh, Raila and Mudavadi and all wanted to be the leaders of ODM. But Raila is very good in uh, crowd mobilization, so he started using crowds to be booing because he saw that his greatest competition, he saw that his biggest competition would come from his biggest competition would come from Kalonzo. So whenever they used to have public rallies, uh, people believed to be close to to Raila would uh, boo down Kalonzo. So when they would started booing down Kalonzo, the air, the air was so much that uh, it was obvious that now if they were to call for a delegates meeting or, or uh, electing uh, officials, Raila stood a good chance of uh, being elected the, the, the candidate, the ODM Kenya leader and the candidate. So when he did that, he first of all, Raila insisted that they go for party election. You see, all officials were, all officials were temporary, interim officials. So Raila said that they should fight for uh, election to have real officials. But Kalonzo being a lawyer, he told Manzo to stick to, to, to stick to, to stick to, to the party and not and, and not call for the elections. Then out of the blues, now nobody knows. The lawyer Kadurima and Raila are the, and only maybe a few people around them know what happened. Suddenly we saw in the newspaper where Kadurima was now handing over, apparently for lack of evidence, freely. He was handing over freely the, the, the party to Raila. And the funny thing about the, the picture was, he's a, he's a he was a, I don't know whether he's still, but he was a licensed gun holder. So as he was stretching his hand to give out the license, we saw a pistol in his trouser. So that is how uh, for the Kenya, not for the Kenya, that is how ODM and ODM Kenya split into two. Now it came to a question of party symbols party symbols, already ODM had uh, an orange. So these ones came up with an uh, one and a half orange. An orange that was okay, and the other one was cut into two. And they called it Chungwa Plus to show that it is an orange and a half. And whenever they used to, to have, uh, when they, whenever they used to have um, public meetings, the late Kalonzo Musio, no, the late Mutula Kilonzo used to be the MC, the, the MC, and you see, he used to have a very strong Kamba accent. So you would tell people the waving, the way people wave in a in a church crusade or a public rally, you would say wave. But yeah, 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 you know, we waving it, it, it is like the wipe wiper of the vehicle, and that is how. The party came to be known as, they later came and changed their name to Wiper Democratic Party. I cannot complete the story of Kalonzo Musioka without first of all mentioning that he is very much into scouting movement. He's a very senior commissioner with the Kenya Scouts Association. And again, I want to say that uh, when they held the elections, when they held the elections uh, 2007, uh, of course, many of the MPs did. Kibaki was sworn in. Let me use the word was sworn in. Kibaki was sworn in as the president. But uh, the only way to remove the president was through, the only way to remove the president was through impeachment. And Kibaki's party did not have parliamentarians. So that is when he promised and gave Kalonzo Musioka, the vice presidency, and some several cabinet seats. Uh, that is, uh, and you know, coincidentally, before that election, he used to say people underrate him by saying that he is a, a nobody, but he said Kibaki would be here, Raila would be here, and I'll pass Katikati. And that is how he was. 
and he became the vice president. Uh, he became the vice president. Uh, he's uh, generally, he was even once called Guatemelon uh, during, the, during the campaign for 2005 election. Uh, it means that uh, the, the, during the 2010 election, no, not 2010 uh, constitution, not election. In the 2010 constitution, uh, there, was a, a, there was a question of symbols. You see, IEBC was very careful. Oh, it was called ECK. ECK was very careful. Because in the 2005 uh, in the 2005 uh, constitutional review, ECK had come up. They were thinking, now, what, we only need two symbols. We need a symbol to show that you are against the, the 2005 constitution. And then they, they, they had to have another symbol to say that you are. So they looked at the banana. And you know, banana looks like a tick. Eh? So when you say that... Uh, the, the, the 2005 constitution is okay. You give it a tick, eh? which is in the shape of a banana. And then, uh, if you do an exam and you get zero, is you have rejected the whole of it. So if you see that the 2005 uh, uh, constitution you have rejected, you give it a zero, which is an orange. So uh, the government, the Kibaki government, started feeling that uh, the, I, the ECK, as IBC was then known, must have collaborated in uh, the, uh, losing there because the, 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 they gave symbols that led to people start mocking the government. So in the 2010 constitution, the ECK again was very careful not to be named names because of assigning symbols. So they said in a, in a roadblock, not in a roadblock, in a traffic... Uh, light if you are if you are if you want to go ahead they give you a green light but if you want to stop they give you a red light so they said those who want to stop that constitution should have it red should mark a red the place where it's red and those people who want that constitution to go ahead they be given green that is how the the idea of green and uh, red came up in that constitution but in the 2010 constitution in the 2010 constitution uh, it happened that uh, nobody knew many people started doubting Kalonzo Musioka's uh, state uh, stand some even felt that uh, he was playing in the two if you look at his statement you could not know is he for orange, I mean, is it no? Is it for red? Is it for green? So people are saying that he was for green, which means he was supporting uh, the constitution. But in his heart, he was against the constitution, uh, and that means that out outside he's green, and inside he's red, and that is how the name watermelon came in. Uh, Kalonzo Musioka is uh, a coward. He's like my second cousin, Eugene Wamalwa, a person who wants to be handed uh, things on silver platter. Uh, he has deferred, he has deferred his uh, candidature, thinking that it will reach a time when uh, Raila will hand over the candidature to him. He has deferred it for so long, and I do not see him. I do not see him uh, being a serious candidate in future. In my recordings in the past, I've said, and I'll repeat, that uh, after Ruto, after Ruto, the next president, the sixth president, has never been a member of Khan. If you look at all those people who have contested the presidency, if you look at all those people who have been presidents in Kenya, Starting with Jomo Kenyatta, Moi, Kibaki, uh, Uhuru, and now Ruto, all of them at one time, they were Kanu members. But I can tell you, as I, see, as, 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 as I complete this episode, that the next president 
will never have been a Meccano member in his life. 